guys, we're going to continue with another video right now. We're going to do the hand and then go on to the lower extremity. Okay, so we're going to jump right in and show you the hand here. So looking at the hand, you can see that this is the thumb. We're going to go over carpals, metacarpals, and then phalanges. Uh, first off, there's lots of different techniques for learning the carpals, but we're going to show you the way I like to do it, and that is to basically learn the bone by shape. So the first thing we're going to do, if you notice the thumb over here again, you're going to see below the thumb is the trapezium. Thumb, trapezium. So that's a good way, easy way of remembering that carpal bone. Right next to the trapezium, okay, uh, is the trapezoid. And if you notice, that is the smallest carpal bone. Okay, next to the trapezoid, right in the center, is the capitate, and that's the largest carpal bone. Okay, continuing over, right, we're going from technically lateral to medial. We're over here to the bone with a hook. The bone with the hook is called the hamate. Hamate has a hook. Okay, continue down now. We go to two bones that are connected to each other, right, so now we're on the fifth digit side we have the pisiform and the triquetrum right below it so they're basically connected here pisiform and triquetrum okay and then below that I'm gonna kind of pick that up a little bit maybe you can see that better or not might be hard to see on the video but next to that we're moving back to the lateral side again we have the lunate if you look at it closely it is half moon shaped and then last but not least, if you look at this bone, I'll show you from a few different angles, this bone here kind of looks like a peanut, you know, picture a peanut with a shell. That's the scaphoid, okay? Flip them over, kind of show you again, that may be more visible. Again, the scaphoid. If you notice, you can still see the thumb trapezium. You can still see the trapezoid, still the smallest. Capitate, right? You can see basically everything hamate. Can't see the hook, of course, but hamate's there. Pisiform, triquetrum, lunate, scaphoid. You know, when you're looking at it on your own, it's gonna be a lot easier. So if I flip it back over, this is the anterior surface. Real quickly, we'll go over metacarpals. So all of these are metacarpals, which are basically the bones of the palm. And we always number the metacarpals uh, starting with the thumb. So this would be number one, two, three, four, five. We always number, and this is the same with the phalanges, we always number uh, using Roman numerals. Okay? And basically these would be the heads, these would be the bodies, and these would be the bases of the metacarpal. Then we jump a little further, maybe I'll spin this around. Okay? Now we're looking at the phalanges, okay? The key thing to remember with the phalanges, if we jump here to second, third, fourth, and fifth fingers, we're gonna notice that there's actually three phalanges. There's always gonna be a proximal, a middle, and a distal, okay? This would be, again, number two, number three, number four, number five. Number one phalange, or phalanx, is always only gonna have a proximal and a distal. So again, Sing singular term is phalanx, plural is phalange, and we also have a name for the thumb itself, and you know, you might have heard it before, it's called pollux. Pollux or pollicis refers to the thumb, okay? So that's everything for the hand, okay? Pretty straightforward. We're gonna move right in here, talk about the femur, very, very big bone, and gonna be kinda tricky to see this bone, you know, pan in, I'm sure it's going to be difficult, but we're going to do the best we can. I'm going to start um, just by kind of showing you some aspects of it. This is the posterior aspect. This is the anterior aspect. I'm going to show you the head now. This is the head and what we call the proximal end, right, or superior end of the femur. So we'll go over some of the landmarks in order here from our bone list. So you've got First off, the head of the femur. They refer to this area as the neck. Okay, they call this the greater trochanter and over here the lesser trochanter. I'll flip that over, show you again the greater and the lesser trochanter. On the posterior side, there's a crest here. We call that the intertrochanteric crest. 
okay? Uh, also on the posterior side, you can see a groove here. This groove is called the linea aspera, okay? And something to make note of, I'll flip back to the anterior side, the head's always going to face medially, right? Because it's going to have to connect with the socket. If you remember from the previous video, the socket's called the acetabulum. So this always makes for the medial side, this makes for the lateral, lateral side. There's a roughened area out here on the lateral side, we call it gluteal tuberosity. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to show you, we're going to flip this down now, show you the distal aspect and show you the epicondyles first. So this is the medial epicondyle. This would be the lateral epicondyle. Again, I know that's the medial epicondyle because it's the same side as the head of the femur. This would make for the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. Condyles, we've mentioned this before, are always in the joint space, make up part of the joint surface, and they're smooth and they're rounded. Okay? Right between the condyles is the intercondylar fossa. Okay? And <clears throat> another line I forgot to mention, I'll mention it now on the medial side, we refer to this as the spiral line. Kind of hard to see, but there's a little line here. We refer to that on the medial side, again, as the spiral line. And last but not least, looking back at the head again, there is a hole here called the fovea capitis. Now, we need to know left versus right. And in this case, this is a right femur. I know that because the knee is going to flex, you could say, backwards. Head faces medial, so it's pretty easy to pinpoint this bone as a right femur. Okay, so that's the femur. We're going to put that aside, jump right into showing you the tibia. Okay, tibia is going to be the biggest bone of the lower leg. Femur was the biggest bone of the upper leg, and for that matter, it's the biggest bone in the body. So now we jump into the tibia. If you look down here, this is the distal part, right? This is going to be down at the ankle. This is the proximal end up at the knee. And maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and show you this in first. Okay, this is actually already marked for us. And this bump, which would be the anterior side, this bump, which is fairly prominent, basically be right below, if I put it this way, that may help, I don't know. It'd be right below the patella, right? Inferior to the patella, that's the tibial tuberosity. Tibial tuberosity. This right here, this ridge, right? It's called the anterior crest, right? It's a ridge. It's basically what people call their shin bone here. The, the, the crest of the tibia, it's called the anterior crest, okay? Now, if we look at the very top of the tibia, there's a plateau. They actually call this the tibial plateau. If you look here, this is the medial condyle and the lateral condyle and they refer to this as the uh, intercondylar eminence. Kind of bump a ridge in the middle, intercondylar eminence. Okay, now the reason I know, and I'll just show you real quick, I know this is the medial condyle, I'll show you quickly, because it's on the exact same side as the medial malleolus. Medial malleolus, as you notice, there's only one bump on the tibia, and it's the medial malleolus, so that would make up the inner ankle bone, okay? So if you put all that together, that's going to make for a right tibia, okay? And again, that is basically everything that you need to know on the tibia. So with that, I can throw this over here real fast. The bone that we're missing, the bone that's always going to be the lateral bone, is going to be the fibula. So we'll go ahead and look at the fibula here. Okay, fibula's somewhat tricky because the proximal end looks a lot like the distal end. Okay, the proximal end, I'm going to spin it around so you can see the proximal end real well. It's a little more rounded, and that is because this is referred to as the head, the head of the fibula. And on the head, as you'll see here, is an apex, a little point called the apex. Okay, that is our proximal end. That makes the other end 
this distal end. We've got a little mark here, but really the whole thing is referred to as the lateral malleolus, which basically makes up the outer ankle bone, again, the lateral malleolus. So I always position, and I'm going to slide down so you can see this, I always position the apex posteriorly. It's going to have to be uh, the proximal end, which means I'm going to hold it up, and it's going to be, uh, again, placed posteriorly, which is going to make this bone a left fibula. Okay, so it's not going to fit perfectly with my right tibia here, but it's a left fibula. Okay, and that's pretty much it for fibula. Now, last thing we have to look at, bring it over here, is the foot. Okay, so we're going to have the same kind of basic breakdown. We're going to have tarsals instead of carpals. We're going to have metatarsals instead of metacarpals, like the hand. And of course, then we're going to have phalanges. Okay, real quick, we'll go ahead and look at the tarsals first. Again, I think the tarsals are even easier than the carpals easiest way to identify tarsals is the same as we would again for carpals we're going to identify them by the way they look okay so one thing you have to pay attention to just looking at this is this is the great toe we can also call it the hallux or haliasis which refers to the great toe okay we'd number that at number one just like we did with the thumb right so this would be one two three four five we, we put them in roman numerals again showing you that because that's going to help us identify these tarsal bones okay so we call this the medial basically intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones medial intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones okay we always call the bones back posterior to the cuneiforms the navicular we always call the bone that is square, pretty easy to remember, the cuboid. Cuboid is cube-shaped. And the largest bone, I'll do that one real quickly, flip it over here, the largest bone, which is your heel, is the calcaneus. Okay, very distinct. Largest bone of the foot. And the bone on top, which is dome-shaped, at least the top of it is dome-shaped, is the talus. There it is again, the talus. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you real quickly the metatarsals. This is number one, two, three, four, five. And again, these are heads, bodies, and bases. Heads, body, bases. Let me show you that way. Head, body, base. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. Quickly, we go to the uh, phalanges. Kind of line this up a little bit again. So, with the phalanges, same thing. This is second, third, fourth fifth digit so you'll see a proximal middle and a distal phalanx and on the great toe only a proximal and distal phalanx so it's pretty much as simple as that okay and that concludes all the bones and next video will be on muscles